I don't want to go home yet. I'm not ready to leave. Hang on. Last time. Oh, it hugs. The woodworkers tackled chairs. I love the shape. Misty won praise. Absolutely gorgeous. But it was Joe who was sitting pretty. I'd want it in my house. His modernist chair winning him Woodworker of the Week is Joe. Oh. Rada's resin went wrong. I am pretty gutted. But he pulled it back to avoid the double elimination. Bold design. That saw Jade... Let down by the execution. This is so fiddly. And Michelle... Its own identity isn't strong enough. ...lose their seats in the competition. This has been an amazing experience for me. At least we've got each other to console. <laughs> Together. I'm really excited this morning. Coming off the back of the win, definitely giving me a big boost. Bloody hell. <laughs> We're all starting to be a little bit more focused on the competition element, definitely. Feeling fantastic I've made it this far, but it's getting tougher. I don't want to crash out at this point. I am here to get to the end. There's no point in being here otherwise. Should be good. Fresh day, it's a new challenge. Feeling that energy coming through the Welsh Valleys. I'm still here. I'm still here, baby. Good morning, good morning. Morning, morning. OK, woodworkers, huddle, my friends, huddle, huddle. So few of you. There's been a little deforestation and you are now a little cops. Judges, what are you dragging from the lumber yard this week? Sculpting wood is one of humankind's oldest art forms. We want you to show your skills in animating wood with the sculpture of an animal. And if you could animate this block of wood as well, that would be very, very helpful <laughs> along the way. Uh, now, as always, your technicians are here to keep you safe. You've got two working days. Get woodworking. Go. It's going to be a real test. I'm really excited for it. Fairly big. Big enough to play with. This challenge is a major departure for the woodworkers. The sheer size of this wood is just immense. As they must bring pieces of wood to life. There you go. What I'm hoping to see is a different side of their woodworking prowess. They're going to have to understand the material that they're using to give us a convincing animal. Oh, I might have to grab a chisel and join you just for a sec. Oh, soon, soon. Sculpture is such a difficult discipline. I hope it reveals the quality not just of the animal, but of the wood. This is completely out of my comfort zone, but, you know, give it a go. Creating sculptures uses a range of artistic and technical skills. An accurate representation has to be really, really good. A uh, little bit off, looks awful. This flexes totally different muscles to furniture making. It's very cathartic. If you've got some aggression you want to work out, you know. Right. Which saw? The woodworkers have already planned their animal sculptures but must now breathe life into them. The brief simply asks for an identifiable animal sculpture at least one metre high. It can either be carved from one solid piece of wood or assembled from multiple crafted components. Right, where are we? Oh, I'm well excited. Fly through. Oh, yeah. Instinctive woodworker Billy has decided to tackle a great big piece of oak found in the surrounding forest. This is a fallen tree that had fallen over in a storm, so it was dead already. Too heavy for the workshop's floor, Billy's working outside, turning three tonnes of oak into a primal sculpture. I've always wanted to do a massive, magnificent lion. It's the king of a jungle sort of thing. It's the beast. No more needs to be said. To be top dog or cat in this challenge, Billy will carve his lion freestyle with a chainsaw. He's aiming for realism and to capture its power and majesty. Billy, Hello, right. Billy. So what, what is your process? Well, just remove everything that's not a lion. 
<laughs> Great answer. And are you drawing on there, or are you just sketching with the chainsaw? With the chainsaw, I'll just do it by eye. Are you going to have teeth? Yeah. Mouth open as if it's attacking. I think the lion is best carved out of oak because it's got the muscularity, it's got the strength. Oh, right. It's a mission to get to the soul of the wood, and if he can reveal that, then the sculpture will have some power. Good luck to him. I think he's taking on a lot. Head there. Yeah. And then sweep the body down to at least like that. Yeah, massive. I've never carved before, so this is all brand new territory for me. First timer Joe is also carving from solid oak. I'm going to be plunging in and creating loads of lines. Make it into a bit of a grid pattern and then use a chisel to get rid of the bulk. Hello, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. How are you doing? What are you making? I'm going to go for a boxer dog. Based on my boxer dog at home, Oscar. Joe is straying from his signature modern style in favour of humour. His boxer dog will be sat in a boxing ring and will even be wearing boxing gloves. My family has always had boxer dogs and they've got so much expression in the face. With this one, I'm going more along the lines of a little bit of fun. I'm going to put some boxing gloves on it as well. What about the wood itself? How are you finding working with it? Well, I'm trying to follow where the timber will let me go. Respect the log, Joe. You've got to respect it. It's always good to start the day with a big log. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the idea of the dog, the boxing gloves. <laughs> I just thought, no. There is no need to take the joke further. Just a terrible idea. Ah, right. Look at the end of this. That was brand new when I started with it. Wood purist Charlie is the last woodworker choosing the carving method. I am carving a snail out of a giant piece of wood, slightly wondering what the hell I'm doing. Her supersized snail is also being made from oak. The design means less wood to remove than the others. And she'll leave the surface of the shell rough for character, again, reducing workload. I like the idea of scaling up something that's really small. You're doing a snail, which is all soft, sludgy body and then a light shell. So how are you going to get those into this muscular piece of oak? Yeah, it's a good point. It was just a thought. Yeah, It'll to come to her. It. It'll come to her. <laughs> it's going to leave one hell of a snail trail, this. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Charlie. Thank you. It's starting to look snaily. <gasps> <laughs> Why is it pumping? There we go. The other two woodworkers have chosen the assembly method for their animals. I do make sculptures, but they're abstract, and this has to look like the animal we're representing. Creating a more literal piece may stretch her, but Misty's approaching the task with familiar precision. I printed my design, and then I cut out all the little bits, and I'm now using them as a template to transfer my design onto the wood. It's going to be a zebra. She's carving her zebra's distinctive stripes from oak, which will then be charred and fixed together with fine metal supports, sat atop a blackened base. I do love a zebra. I grew up with a donkey that had striped legs, and it was called Zebedee, and I always thought it was a zebra in my five-year-old <laughs> mind. You know. A two-dimensional zebra on a three-dimensional base. It is, yeah. I'm only making the black bit of the zebra, oh. so I'm using the negative space. You'll only see it properly from one direction. If I'd been trying to represent it in three dimensions, I wouldn't have been happy doing that at all. Thank you, Misty. See you later. She's creating a flat object, and she can cut the shape she wants out of it. It's very clever. But I'm worried there's no oomph to it. And it is an interesting idea. My concern, it won't have soul. Yeah. Gonna need more glue. I'm gluing up a bunch of slabs and then laminating it all together. Yeah, boy! Rada's assembling a block of ash for the central part of his sculpture. This ash should carve away quite nicely. You can get a really nice finish with it. Everyone's using power tools and making a little ash sandwich. Rada's designed a peacock assembled from three main parts the shaped ash body, a tail of individual plywood feathers, 
and a rustic log perch. A peacock? Are you crazy? <laughs> have we got against They're peacocks? They're very vindictive. Peacocks have very mean little eyes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it a realistic kind of peacock? Yeah, a relatively realistic body, but the tail will be more stylized and a little bit more artistic, actually. I think will be an interesting challenge. Are you going to enjoy it? Inside, I'm screaming like a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, well done. There's this peacock log, and then there's the tail. Let's hope he can achieve a balance that doesn't get spoilt with three unconnected things. With things progressing for those assembling... Nothing the mallet can't deal with. Come on! <laughs> right, don't mess around. Oh, man. It's going to take forever. Those carving are struggling. Just hacking away. I'm shattered. <laughs> Even Billy's enthusiasm is waning. I'm a little bit behind. All right, Billy. You look a little bit disheartened. It's the wood. It's a beast, isn't it? Maybe come back when it looks more like a lion. It does look like a lion. That back end, that is a sexy ass. But then I keep thinking it looks a bit like a cow. If you find yourself chainsawing an udder, then get worried. To keep his lion on track, Billy's called for backup. We're going to flip the lion over and then I can get underneath, cut belly out, tickle the lion's belly here, yeah, that's it. OK, Billy, stand clear. The big one and the what? small one. Right. Don't let her roll back. Very nice, very nice. All right? That'll do. Bloody hell. Once turned over, the full scale of the work ahead is revealed. Oh, it's not easy. This was a nightmare. Right, go again. Oh, and chiselled! So good, man. All the woodworkers are around six hours into crafting their animal sculptures. It's without doubt the balmiest thing I've ever made, yeah. Those carving their sculptures have cut away some bulk and are on to the next stage of shaping. I've managed to hack through it to shape in my antennae. And it's looking fairly snaily. It is really physical because you're fighting against it the whole time. <laughs> Sawdust. Carving novice Joe is throwing everything at his oak log. Chisel? No. Axe? Oh, bleeding no. hell. Handsaw? This is a lot of work. And his trusty angle grinder. Oh, whoops. Mine just died. And after all that, he's seeing things. It's taking shape. I can see a boxer dog, which is a good sign. It's in your ears, Joe. In my ears. Sorry, do you mind me doing this? No, it's fine. Oh, it's weak there. Misty's battle will be to cut out her delicate zebra stripes ready to assemble. The strength in a bit of wood is in its grain. This, that's called short grain, and it's very weak. That, long grain, nice and strong. A seemingly simplistic design like Misty's requires pinpoint accuracy. What I really don't want to do is snap anything. A lot of this will be quite delicate when it's finished. This one's going to be quite edgy. All good? Ah, probably a foot and a half to go. It's, it's very slow going. I'm just trying to get an idea of a leg, but how do I work it out upside down? Billy's getting to grips with his lion's anatomy. Still all his genitalia to reveal. I don't think I'm going that far. Something that's also on Charlie's mind. It became apparent that the front of my snail looked like a vagina. So, I'm changing that. Hi, Charlie. Oh, hello. I'm told that there's a story with the front. 
<laughs> so essentially, before it had two distinctive lines. I don't, I don't see it myself. No, well, I made an effort <laughs> to try and make it look less like a vulva. <laughs> <laughs> What's your plan for the shell? I'm keeping this bark and then getting some ridges on it to make it look more shell-like. She's approaching a balance somehow, and this absurd idea of a scaled-up snail is now <laughs> beginning to take on some sort of power. By choosing to use the shape of the log and bark for the shell... It needs more work on it, but, yeah, it's getting there. Charlie's plan to streamline her workload is working. The person who got the most done is actually Charlie. Quite ironic that the snail's going the fastest. Right, tidy up. Rada's sawn his block of ash into a basic shape. Just looks like a very square swan at the moment. But the next stage requires the precision of hand tools. I'm trying to figure out where the weak spot in the grain is. One small slip and we cut decapitation. Ooh, it's going to look awesome. Providing I don't snap the poor little pigeon's neck. Peacock, not a pigeon. My peacock. Man. While animals are beginning to emerge inside... Oh, it is so hard, it is untrue. Billy's huge figure of a lion is refusing to be tamed. It's just made every chain blunt. Like, that's a brand new chain. It's insane. Just coated in resin and sap. He's just doing my nothing. I think Billy might have bitten off more than he can chew. What we're hearing now is the um, desperation of the chainsaw. <laughs> it's not so much a saw that you tell it where to go, it's a saw that you just sort of hope. Just under halfway through their animal sculptures. Ooh and at least two woodworkers are being swallowed whole. As soon as I can get this head freed up from the actual log, should be a lot better. But with the skills challenge approaching, immunity could be in reach. A chance to win immunity, I could really do with it on this one. I might need the immunity. It'd definitely be good to get it, but we'll see. Pockets full of sawdust. It's great. <laughs> OK, woodworkers, please follow me. Let's go outside for the skills challenge. <laughs> you know you want to. Can't wait. <sighs> what a day. Let's do this. All right, Billy. All right. Come join. Wow. This time, the woodworkers aren't just being tested on a core technique but also how they can take to working with some ancient equipment. Is it a fishing rod? Is it a sewing machine? I've got no idea, but I do know that if you win this skills challenge, it will win you the immunity into the next round. Judges, please explain. Today, you'll be following in the footsteps of your Viking forefathers by using this ancient technique, the pole lathe. You will be replicating this candlestick from green silver birch. You've got 90 minutes. Don't be lazy now. <laughs> and get woodworking. Who thought of this? Um, hell's teeth. Before using the pole lathe, they must shape the wood into a cylinder with a draw knife. I'm just going for it. Just go for it, kid. Never used one of these before. I've been using the electronic lathe for quite a few years. I'm pretty excited to try the origin of turning. I've got my cylinder very rough to shape. It's looking pretty good. Rada's on already. I've got to catch up to him. The Vikings used pole lathes to turn basic bowls and plates. A pole lathe is a foot-operated wooden lathe, the string being pulled back and forth spinning the wood so that you hold a chisel against it and it will take off the material. But it's not a straightforward technique. You have to learn when to press and when to relax. So we've got to get it to a cylindrical shape first. Yeah, Stone Age technology. I mean, immunity. 
Ha. It's hard work, really hard work. It's a test of hand-eye coordination. It's a balancing act, uh, uh, doing the bottom and the, the top bit. As they must pump the pedal while lining up the chisel. It's madness. It's like trying to eat a sandwich on a trampoline. I'm knackered. There's a bit of a rhythm that you need to find with it. Rada's on it. Gotta beat him. Gotta beat him. It's a majestic look, Misty, it's I've got to laugh. say. I, no, I love it. It's just the boots, the boot action. Yeah, it's quite medieval, it's isn't it? It's just brilliant. The rope fell off. Ah! <laughs> Billy, that's a very nonchalant stance you've got there with your, with your pole. It's almost like you're at the bar waiting to order a drink. I want mine, though. Cylinder smoothed, they must sculpt out decorative grooves. V here, start dipping here. Copying the shape of their example candlestick to make a pair. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to tackle this, to try and get some kind of shape into it. Considering it's my first time doing it, it's going too badly. It's just about not digging in too deep. Oh, you... I'm just dug into it. <laughs> Sabotaging your own yeah, work, Yeah, well, huh? just, just lay off a little bit. Give me a chance. <laughs> Give me a chance. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I've taken a great big chunk out of it. I'm not enjoying this. OK, woodworkers, you're halfway through this challenge. Clock's ticking. 45 minutes left to win immunity. I need immunity. So that's good. Useless at this. Do you feel like you really want to get this immunity? I need to. It's in the state of the dog at the moment. Keep going. Keep going. I'm just now going back, refining the shape. It's almost good. I did put some marks on, but then we're gone out the window now. I'm going freehand now. It's going to be an abstract candlestick. Give up with the lathe. I've got no like strings popping up. Butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, you've got four minutes Ooh, left. Four minutes. Four minutes. Get off, get off, get off, get off. At the last minute, it's finishing touches. Next step after this is just drilling a hole into it. To turn their candlestick. It's a bit of a wobbly candlestick. <laughs> and the guide version into a pair. I'm hoping the judges won't be able to pick it up and see. It's a cunning plan. Yeah. I had a goal. Never mind. OK, woodworkers, vacate the poles. There's a hen party from Leatherhead that want to get on them. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, it was yeah, properly fun, was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that is good. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty happy with the quality of my work. If I can get immunity, fantastic. I don't want the judges to see them. <sighs> Using a traditional pole lathe, the woodworkers have each turned a candlestick. Friends, woodworkers, candlestick makers, judging is upon us. The best one will immediately make it through to the semi-final. Exciting times, gang. Are you ready for this? Yeah! Yeah! They had to copy a template candlestick and present both as a pair. Charlie, please bring up the old candlesticks. Thank you. We have on the left the original, and we have yours on the right. The details are similar. It stands and delivers <laughs> a rough but good effort. Well done, Charlie. Was the red paint there just to hide it? No, I just fancied <laughs> painting them red. It hasn't hidden anything. There's no point in putting the finish on the top. It just makes everything that's there <laughs> look worse. It stands, it holds a candle, a good first effort, albeit rough. Thank you. <laughs> 
So which one's which? That one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a marginal resemblance. And you look like you've been at this with a draw knife. I did. I okay. gave up on the lathe and I just couldn't get the hang of it at all. It's a sort of Viking interpretation of the candlestick. It has a this. raw power to it. Looking at the shape and looking at the size, they're very similar. We've got the same little quirk detail at the top. I think they're pretty good. It's not a bad finish, I have to say. Stands, takes a candle. Well done, mate. Nice. Thank you so much. Height-wise, they are pretty much spot on. And then we're missing that little finishing round over at the top. You can see that that's slimmer, so you've gouged slightly too much out. Yeah. It stands. Da -da. Billy, not a bad effort. Well done. Thank you. Five candlesticks, but only one can win precious immunity. Judges, have you deliberated? We, we have. have. Care to share? The clear winner is... Radha. Oh, <laughs> well done, Radha! <laughs> immunity to the semi-final. Oh, feels good. It feels good. Yeah, someone's <laughs> sitting pretty. <laughs> Immunity this week would have been a godsend. I think I really need it. I really enjoyed this one. It's been fun. Tiring, but fun. Yeah. Mm. It's Very tiring. <laughs> it's just been another insane day. I think maybe bitten off more than I can chew. With Immunity off the table, the remaining woodworkers can only rely on their wooden animals to save them from elimination. Let's get started. A lot to do. I'm really hoping that the reality will match the mental picture I have of it. Mine's pretty rough looking, so yeah, I'm raring to go, get that detail sorted. That's it. Stay clear for now, Bill. Emotionally drained. Just like mentally drained. There it is. There just can't think other than just cut. Before getting on with his lion, Billy and his chainsaw are helping out one man and his dog. Very kindly, Billy has offered to chop this big back section out. Yeah, it goes. OK, we got it. I can actually work all the way around the dog now. This is a huge help. It really full face. Despite his sculpture being quite small, Joe's behind. So, literally, this whole section here needs to get cleared. Feeling time pressure, he's making changes. What I'm thinking of doing, get the face details in place and make sure it looks like a boxer and worry about the rest later. He wants his dog to look like his dog. I think he might have been better off doing his trademark modernist yeah. simplicity uh, without going into all the finicky detail. It'll be all right. Oh. Now I'm just going to carve a little bride and groom for the top. With five hours left... I am going off plan. Usually methodical Misty is also changing it up. My original design, these were all steps, because I didn't think I'd have time. But I'm going to turn off all these corners so it becomes a lovely smooth, curved thing. <laughs> production values of Misty's work <laughs> is always high, but I find it very clinical. Yes, it's a worry, isn't it? This is proper lathing. None of that pole dancing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Charlie's strategy to keep work to a minimum... I am doing some antennae. ..means she has time for details along the way. Any snail has an antenna at the top and an antenna in the front, so I'm attempting to make some. God, I hate whittling. <laughs> Rada's also doing well, moving from his silky body... Rada, can I stroke your peacock? Oh, no, please! That is exceptionally smooth. ..onto his plywood tail feathers. 
Today is a lot of repetitive work. I need to cut over a hundred feathers. Madness. I'm just trying to reveal a face. At the moment, it just looks like a big blob, but it will start coming. I wonder if he knows how to get the final bit that makes the lion come to life. This is always a problem, I think, missing out on the character of the wood mm. and the character of the animal. Yep. Carving-wise, it's just chopping the right bits, cos obviously once you've chopped it out, you can't exactly go back. Just broken a tooth off. This is just what I don't need. I'm not going to get it done. 15, 16, 17. It's now a volcano. 21, 22, 24. Charlie, he's really sweet. Yeah. Look at him with his little horns. They're antennae, yeah. The antennae. <laughs> yeah. 36. What I'm loving, Charlie, is you've got this colossal mammoth piece of wood. Yeah. And you've just got a tiny piece of sanding paper. <laughs> just, fo <laughs> just really focusing in. Oh, 85. Right. Frantically hoovering my snail. And then I'm going to uh, oil it. With their animals getting closer to completion, some woodworkers are adding colour. I'm not going for a realistic peacock feather, I'm going for a bit of a stylized thing. That's going to be all right. Having precisely cut out all her zebra stripes, Misty is playing with fire. It brings the oils to the surface, it completely negates the need for any sanding. It's getting there. Joe's using the same trick, perfecting his boxer's face. I need to get the muzzle nice and black and a little section around the eyes. It's like painting with fire. While the woodworkers are creating magical creatures... Hi! I'm doing my own animal study. Hey, guys. How are you doing? They love me. Guys! It's television's Mel Gedroyt. Not that they seem to care. Guys! All I care about at the moment is that lion. Billy's got to give the bite back to his beast. I want to do the lion justice. That's better now, isn't it? One problem down, but... I am looking at the front of this lion and thinking, What's going to happen with the eyes? There's going to be some eyes. OK, cos we haven't got... We haven't got long. There's still work to do to be king of this jungle. Good luck. It's all a little bit edgy. After all her prep, sculptor Misty is at the assembling stage. Obviously a lot riding on it, not least pride. It's a jigsaw puzzle, but with high stakes. The optical illusion of her zebra relies solely on her dexterity using a glue I've never used to do something really difficult. Oh, this is all so unnerving. It's not the time to be experimenting. That's a recipe for mistake-making and tears. OK, woodworkers, the finishing hour is upon you. There he is. Are you going to get it done in the hour? That's the plan. OK. I'm doing my stress dip. <laughs> Slight stress dip. I've managed to get a lot more hollowed out on the back leg and underneath the belly. Because it's quite cold, the glue didn't set. It hasn't glued together. Ah, you're doing the boxing ring. Yep. The previous projects, all I've, I've liked to keep minimalist, but with an animal sculpture, I wanted to bring a little bit of fun into it. Foiled by the bloody glue. 
Just putting a few feathers in, a bit of hot glue. Not that many times have I oiled a giant snail. It's looking moist. Yes. I think you've snailed it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm still wet. Prince Percival the Peacock needs a crown. I need to make some eyes. It's Robert Plant, lead singer of Led Zeppelin. That's what I'm getting. And that is a good thing, because he is the lion of rock and roll. Oh, yeah. That's it. Right, chock out, grass in, rock in. Panic, Mr Mannering! With her glue not drying... I don't know what's going to happen. I imagine it'll just fall apart. All she can do is balance it together and hope. Just got to wait for the glue to dry. <laughs> OK, woodworkers, stop grooming your animals, please. <sighs> and down tools. That'll do. I am not touching these teeth again. Excuse me. Billy, time to stop! <sighs> 18 hours. Five animal sculptures. Now the two judges will scrutinise the specimens. Oh. Never a lion again. It doesn't seem to matter how much time you have. Always at the end, it's a mad rush. Not quite how I wanted it. Something just doesn't look right. But I don't know what it is. I hope I've done enough um, to avoid being knocked out. But we'll have to see. If it is me that goes, I'm going to be gutted. Really sad. <laughs> well, <laughs> done it. After creating their animal sculptures for two days, the workshop has gone wild. Now for a place in the semi-final, the judges will decide whose animals are magic and whose are flea-bitten. Charlie's carved a huge snail from oak, working with the shape of the log and using the bark as a textural shell, finished with a sheen of oil. She loves it. I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Alice in Wonderland yeah. and yeah. I've drunk something from the little bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it does challenge reality a little bit. You've worked with the log instead of against it to emphasise all the different textures in a way that you would find in a snail, so well done. Thank you. This is something that's strong, it speaks, and it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Also, it's kind of grotesque, but mm -hmm. it goes out of the other side into something beautiful. It works. Mm -hmm. Immune from elimination, Rada assembled his sculpture. The peacock's body formed from ash with a stylized tail of individual plywood feathers, all sat on a Douglas fir log. Rada, I think you, you have succeeded in capturing the dim witted vanity of the <laughs> male peacock. <laughs> <laughs> now, seriously, as a sculpture, you seem to have made three you made a bird. There's this log and then there's the tail. I don't feel they sit easily with each other. You're showing the grain of the timber, which is beautiful, mm. and then the tail yeah. itself just looks like a cartoon version. Yeah. Why? I really focused a lot in on the body, and, yeah, I definitely dropped the ball with the tail. This is actually what we've come to expect from you, that we get quality in one part, i.e. the body of the bird, mm. and then almost a half assed attempt at the rest of it. Yeah. First time carver Joe turned his back on his modernist style for a more humorous one, producing an oak boxer dog complete with gloves set in a boxing ring. You work by assembly normally rather than carving. How come you made it so hard for yourself? It's something I've never done before and I wanted to give it a try. For someone who hasn't done any carving before, to produce a dog that's got a little cheeky, chappy face, I think is a credit to you. But it's standing so awkwardly and sort of misshapen. Is it a joke too far with right. the boxing gloves and the boxing ring and all yeah. of the paraphernalia around it? For me, I'm a bit confused about what yeah. the genre is, you know. Yeah. I think he's created his own genre here, guys. I think so. <laughs> Misty has put together a stylized zebra 
from pieces of blackened oak, held together with rods to create the illusion of stripes. Congratulations. What you've done is so clever. I think your jointing method is really good. Thank you. I didn't expect to like it. I didn't like it on paper, but um, this optical game of solid and void does work from where I'm standing. I really like it. And the base that you've put it on is so much better than the original one in your drawing. Thank you. I'm interested in the fact that the blackened wood, which is charring rather than painting, does still reveal the quality of the oak. Well done. Thank you very much. Finally, Billy has produced a huge lion out of an enormous oak log. Carved almost entirely with a chainsaw, his aim was for a realistic, powerful sculpture. Billy, for me, it's a case of nice arse shame about the face. <laughs> I see the lion. It's very much like a lion. It's got some of the muscle and the stance and the bad temper of a lion. You've done such a fantastic job in getting rid of all that material, but the front looks a little bit cartoony instead of fearsome. You were so tenacious in this fight. I appreciate the Herculean task. Yeah, it was quite, quite a difficult one, was that? This has been such a battle that the charm that your work often automatically has isn't present. I think you know that, don't you? Yeah. We're heading into the semi-final, mm -hmm. so this decision that you're about to make is really important. It is. Who this week is sublime? I think we have to commend Misty. I didn't expect to like it, but she achieved such a high quality. She was clever to abstract the piece. Mm. Charlie Snail. Yeah. Just fantastically bonkers and... Very enjoyable. <laughs> she didn't try to pretend it wasn't made out of a tree. And she actually didn't do that much work on the shell at the back, but I think that was to her credit. So they're at the top, and who's down with Woody from Bay City Rollers? Rado is immune, so it is between Billy and Joe. Joe, I didn't think that the carving was particularly strong, apart from the face. And he really put a lot of time and effort into that, and then it all sort of got lost in the body. You know, all the accessories worked against it. Let's talk about Billy. I'm, d I'm disappointed because Billy was clearly relishing that challenge and he didn't know when to stop. I like the hair, though. I like the, the mane. Mm. Billy's line did have a kind of a movement to it, but it's just that it's a little bit comedic and, and he didn't mean it to be. It's been a massive learning curve, I think, particularly for Billy and Joe. OK, so you've herded up the animals and now it's time to set one of them free. I perhaps should have stuck to what I'm used to, simplistic design and minimalist, but um, what are you going to do? <laughs> I just do the best I can. That's all I can do. So we'll see how far that gets me. Woodworkers harnessing the mighty power of the animal kingdom is no mean feat. One person really shone out this week, like a dazzling Dr. Doolittle. A woodworker of the week is Misty. Yay. Well done. Well done. Thank you. This is a competition. There are winners. Rada, you won that valuable immunity which takes you directly through to next week but one of you, I'm afraid, will have to leave us. So it is with great sadness that the woodworker leaving us this week is... Joe. Damn. What? Never mind. Very, very sad to see you go, Joe. I was ready for it. Sorry, Jeez. mate. It's all right. Oh. It was a really tough decision to choose between Joe and Billy. It's just unfortunate that one of them had to go. Oh, Joe's gone, which sucks. Yeah, he was like my best friend here. I'm relieved. It was emotional. 
can't believe it. I thought I was going out. Woodworker of the week, and I couldn't be more delighted. You can have a rest now. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, it's the semi-finals. Everyone's going to be bringing their A game. I'm in the final four, and it feels good. Can't wait. It's been hard work, absolutely worn out, but enjoyed every second of it. Next time, Woohoo! the fine craftsmanship of drinks cabinets. Oh, pity's sake, absolute dog's dinner. But who'll get drunk on semi-final success? Hello, me! It's well made, it's a quality piece of work. Absolute And who will dry up any slip that that person is not going through to the final? I forgive everything except the door. They're unforgivable. <laughs>